so ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the show today we're back with travis again after a brief uh two week break so uh, travis what's going on man i got a lot of really cool updates the first one is i just did a podcast and it's a two-part series it's like a mega episode on why you need to get a virtual assistant how you can actually get that virtual assistant and how to use them and you can find that at how to do your 20s.com or just find it on stitcher or whatever but it's episode i believe number seven and eight so i'm really excited about this episode so the How to Do Your 20s podcast is a podcast I started. It's my own podcast, and it's basically all about how to optimize your life. And it's specifically set for things that people in their 20s are interested in. But truthfully, there's a lot of overlap. For instance, hiring a virtual assistant is something that anybody can do. But I'm specifically saying like, hey, people in your 20s, this is something you're probably not thinking about. You should probably do. But I cover a lot of other topics that I think people of all ages would be interested in, such as being a digital nomad, traveling, et cetera. Gotcha. So if I'm a little bit older, like I'm 31, I won't feel like ostracized for being on your site. No, I no, I just wanted to niche down as much as possible. And I figured by saying, hey, if you're in your 20s, this is the podcast for you. It'll get that group of people. It's truly all about life optimization minus the how to optimize having kids or owning a house. That's not something I cover. Cool, cool. And uh, what's the goal of this podcast? Do you have any plans with it? Or I got a couple different things, but truthfully, I really enjoy talking with different people. So the main reason I started it was to be able to share some nuggets of knowledge that I have and more importantly, nuggets of knowledge that other people have and kind of have one spot. I feel like there's a lot of podcasts that go on different topics. Like if you want to learn about business, you come to this one, or you want to learn about this, you go to the other one. But I wanted to do something that anybody in their 20s specifically would be interested in. Yeah, gotcha. And you're also speaking on an event, right? Yes. December 4th, I'm speaking at an e-commerce summit. And if you use the code word gobble gobble, you get a free ticket. I believe it starts at 8 p.m. CST. Double check on the website. And I'm going to be speaking at 12 p.m. CST time. So get a free ticket. Come, there's about going to be about five speakers, including me, and I'm going to do a whole big condensed thing on paid advertising. Literally everything I've learned about paid advertising in an hour. So the event is called e-commerce summit and it's online, I believe. Yep. Right? It's all online. You can get a free ticket. I mean, there's no reason not to at least drop in and listen to me. There's once again, five speakers, all of us talking about different things. And if you own an e-commerce store and you're not going, it's there's no reason not to go. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's like 2 a.m. for me, man. I don't know if I want to wake up and uh, hear you talk some more. I mean, we're already talking a lot right now. So. Oh, are you kidding me? You love it. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll awesome. make sure I mark that on my calendar. All right, then. So I guess for me, uh, I've just been working on the laptop sleeve for the past two weeks. And one thing that kind of really changed my thinking was that I was listening to this podcast called 10 Times Talk. And you're talking about, you know, how can you make... Uh, either your life or your goals or your business 10 times better, right? And remember, we talked about the book Zero to One. Uh, Peter Thiel was talking about how when you make something new, you want to make it 10 times better too. So what I did was I made a list of in like my Evernote, like how can I make this sleeve 10 times better than what's on the market? So I kind of went through, like, yeah, the battery idea was kind of cool, but there's also like nine more things to fill, right? So I was just going through that exercise and actually figuring out things that would be useful. So things kind of like a core organizer, because a lot of people, they throw their charger cable uh, earphones, everything, it kind of gets a, becomes a tangled mess. You can build something like that in and also like accessories pocket to put your uh, notebook, uh, tablet, phone, whatever, and also have like a butterfly design because when you go through TSA now in the airport, there are actually certain bags that you don't have to take your laptop out, but the design has to be, it has to be like a clamshell design. It can't be like a huge bag. So something like that. It's kind of interesting how like you can do this exercise with something brand new too. So like even for your store, like you know, how can you make your store 10 times better than what's out there on the market? And, and so in the podcast, you're saying like when you th start thinking 10 times, like your brain starts to visualize what it's like when you get there. And you also start paying attention to things that have bigger impact too. Uh, your first one is Google Docs. Google Docs, we use it for everything. I mean, we're using it to read the notes that we wrote for this episode right now. So me and Terry both write down our ideas for an episode in one single word type document in Google Docs, and we're able to collaborate in real time. And I also use it for my virtual assistant. Everything I interact with my virtual assistant is pretty much on Google Docs. I give her all her tasks on a giant spreadsheet, which has a bunch of different tabs and she can cross it out as she's done with it and type to me if she has a question. Google Docs are just amazing. Yeah, I think the cool thing that this has, this thing has is that uh, A, it's, it has the change history. 
So if someone like deletes stuff, you forgot who deleted it, you could like actually go back and see who did it and like undo undo things like that. And also there's a real time collaboration, right? Like if I'm typing like, oh hi Travis, like you're seeing this on your screen, right? Yep. As I'm typing it, <laughs> which is really real cool. Because like back then, remember, like before this, you had to like say you're at your corporate job, you had kind of word document, you send it to like ten people, and then one guy changes it, he replies to all, and then he's just back and forth. You don't know which version you're using. Yeah, it, I think it can easily get out of sync, or someone accidentally overwrites over something. This happened to me at my last job. I accidentally overwrote a file on the server and everyone's like oh my god who did that and i'm like oh this isn't good exactly and i think a lot of those companies aren't tied into new cloud services like these so they're still in like the dinosaur age in terms of like productivity tools too so yeah but google docs also doesn't have word it has excel i think powerpoint a couple other things too that you can use but i think the word one is the most common one that at least we use uh, in our circles too so all right, cool. So the uh, second one I have is antisocial. So I use, I've been using this app for about two years now. And what it does is it's a website blocker. So it blocks social media and any URLs you specify. And you can set a timer for like two hours, three hours, four hours on how long to block it. And once you block it, the only way you can cancel it is if your timer goes on or if you restart your computer. So basically there's like, you know, when you try to go on Facebook, it, it just doesn't work. If you try to go to like membership sites like the DC, it doesn't work. If you try to go to like Pirate Bay, whatever, like it doesn't work until the timer runs out. And it's awesome because when you turn it on, the first five minutes, you'll try to like go to Facebook or like Twitter. And then you realize that, okay, it's blocked. And then 10 minutes later, you just don't even think about it. And then but sooner or later, like you've had three hours of productive time. And too. it's actually on your computer or is it an extension to browsers? Yes, it's an app you have to install on your computer. And every time you use it, you need to use the administrator password. So one thing, it's actually not free. It's like 15 bucks. But it's probably like the best 15 bucks I've ever spent too. So, because I think some other apps they block it in the browser, but this one is like a it's like a hard IP block in the code of your internet connection. Too. Yeah, I've used other ones that block it in the browser, and those can be pretty good. But I've found at times I'll just go in and uninstall it from my extensions, and it'll it'll pop up a message like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" I'm like, "Just leave me alone. I'm gonna uninstall this. I'm going on Facebook." So that's kind of cool that it's on your computer. There's no way around it. Yeah, and the only way around it is if you restart your computer or if. Yeah, and that's a pretty. I mean, you're not going to restart. It's pretty desperate if you're restarting your computer to go on Facebook. If you think about going through the process of restarting, closing everything, saving everything, like, oh, well, I'm actually wasting a lot of time just to go on Facebook. And so the other whammy thing too is I leave my phone in a different room so you're not tempted to like check it on your phone too because you can easily be, oh, my desktop's blocked, but I'll check it on my phone. So I do that too. And then I really have nothing that can distract me. My next one actually is something very similar to the antisocial and it's the newsfeed blocker. And what it is, is in Facebook, it actually blocks just your newsfeed. So you can still use the messaging. You can still Facebook stalk people if you need to. And the reason I like this so much is because I've never had anything beneficial come out of the newsfeed. I just waste hours, even in my free time. I'm not even talking about trying to, like not even trying to be more productive. It's just, you ever go on Facebook just because you're bored and you just scroll down that news feed and like, oh, this is an interesting article or, oh, that person's picture is pretty cool. And I just, I, I never feel good about myself after I'm done with news feed. Now with Facebook, I do use it sometimes because, uh, you know, when I'm traveling, you need to communicate with people and you can't always call them on the phone or whatever. And that's at the same time, like there is certain friends that I'm curious, oh, what are they up to? Like, I want to go look at their profile, but I don't want Facebook showing me what they think's interesting because it's usually just people complaining about politics or naked celebrities or something ridiculous that I don't care about. Yeah, like the whole Kim Kardashian thing last week. Apparently she posed nude and there's all these like memes and like animated GIFs of like, some of them are actually kind of funny, but it was just like, why am I spending time watching this? I don't even know what she does. Like, you know, one of the cool things, and I know Terry, you're probably not as big of a fan as I am about this, but it replaces it with a quote. And the cool thing about the quote is it's very similar to what you're talking about with antisocial. And when I go on Facebook just to waste time and I see a quote that says like something to the nature of, you know, you only have so long to live. Like, are you really going to waste your time on Facebook? It quickly, like, I don't go to Facebook as often because every time I go there now, there's a quote saying like, hey, you're slowly dying. Maybe you should not waste your time on this computer. And I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah, until you hit the until you hit the uninstall on the plugin or disable it, right? Oh, but I'm never gonna do that because 
there's no real reason to. I, I like I said, I don't ever get any pleasure out of uh, the Facebook news feed, so I don't ever see myself uninstalling that plugin. Wait, wait, I'm gonna rewind. I'm gonna rewind this podcast like five minutes ago where you said, "Hey, I was deleting this plugin from my." From no, my but that's YouTube. a different one. That's when it blocks Facebook as a whole. The problem is when it blocks when it blocks Facebook as a whole. There's times where I'm like, "Oh crap, I need to uh, email, or I need to message my friend. I have no other option." So I end up deleting it and then I'd never re or I don't reinstall it for a day or two where this one there's never uh, that I can think of going to be a reason where I'm like oh I need news feed it's like if I'm interested in what one of my friends are doing I'll go to their profile and be like hey that's a really cool picture you took or if I need to talk to someone I can still do it but news feed is just a waste of time in my opinion yeah it's, it's like those videos are like hey uh this mom or this girl lived with a gorilla for two years and you won't believe what happened next. It's always the same stuff. Little click, clickbait stuff. It's always <laughs> clickbait and I always fall for it. And I know it's clickbait because I'm an internet marketer. Yeah. But it's like 20 signs you were born in the 1980s. You won't believe number 17. Right? Oh, gosh. Yeah. All right. So my next one is uh, if this, then that slash Zapier. So these are two different kind of automation tools. So if this, then that Zapier, they're basically tools, uh, web apps that you can tie your different accounts in. And then through the API, they can trigger certain things. So, for example, um, like Facebook, Twitter, uh, Mailchimp, you know, your shopping cart, Big Commerce, Shopify. There's these things called APIs, where basically uh, the software can talk to each other, and you can make certain triggers that hey, say if I get a new Facebook like, it sends me an SMS or something like that. So, if this and that is really good for social tools, uh, you can do things where like if you post a picture on Instagram, it saves it in your Dropbox, it auto posts it to like somewhere else it puts it in your google drive like if you have a twitter thing you favorite things it can go to pocket uh, nuzzle any one of your reading apps evernote things like that so a lot of different recipes you can do they ha if this and that has about i think 70 different apps it supports so like Flickr, uh, you can even send sms's um you know rss things like that so that's a good tool for social media a zapier is more of a business tool that some people use so if you have like a crm uh, shopping cart uh, email list, even like accounting things like Zero, Zoom, things like that. You can set certain triggers that uh, make different entries, things like that. And there's like there's like literally hundreds, if not thousands, of recipes. You can do that. Basically, automates everything that's repetitive uh, that you do either on your business or personal life. Hmm. I'll have to look more into Zapier. I still still am curious about that. All right. So the next one is yours. Uh, LastPass. LastPass is an automatic password tool. So basically, anytime you log into any kind of website, it just automatically puts your password in for you. Let's say, you know, you're going to your Gmail every day. In fact, what it can do is it'll save it one time. And from that point on, it'll just auto log you in. That's really cool because you don't have to waste time typing. And also you won't ever forget your password because it's saved in LastPass. On top of this, a feature that I haven't used yet that I'm planning to start using soon is you can pay, I think it's $9.99 a year. Basically, you'll get family style or family mode and family mode lets you have you and I think four other people in your quote unquote family and you can share passwords. So if you're the admin of the family, you can give people the extension code and they'll use it and they don't even know what the password is. So they'll go to, let's say you want to give them a password to get into your Gmail. They'll just go to your Gmail, it'll log them in and they don't even know what that password is because the app takes care of everything. And this is really useful for virtual assistants or people that are working for your company that maybe you want to give them temporary access, but as soon as they quit, you want to take all that away. This is one of the things that LastPass is really useful for. So if you have a VA, you would give her the LastPass password, not the actual password of the account, right? Exactly. And so then as soon as she quits, you just change the LastPass password or you uh, deactivate her from it. And she doesn't know any of your passwords. She never did. So it's a little bit more safe and effective and it's automatic. And right now what I'm doing is just using a giant spreadsheet. And the problem with the spreadsheet is if my password changes, I need to like go in and change the password in the spreadsheet. But with this, it's pretty much automatic. You just have to click a little button saying, yes, I saved my password in the last pass, which pops up on your screen and it'll change it for your VA or anybody else in your family. So it's it's an extension for Chrome or Firefox or any of that kind of stuff. Oh, and then you and then you add her user logged in there into your LastPass account. Yeah, so it's uh, on my LastPass I'd say that all right, so mine's Travis Marziani at gmail.com, whatever my password is. Also have this person myva at gmail.com with her password and I'll give her that information. 
I'll say, okay, share these passwords with her. But then as soon as she quits, I can say no longer let my VA at gmail.com be able to access my passwords. Boom. Cool, cool. All right, so number six, mine is our Rescue Time. So Rescue Time is an app that tells you every week how you're using your time on the computer. So it actually records you whether you're in like Photoshop, a browser, uh, social media, things like that. So they can actually, they don't tell you what site you're at because there's some privacy issues, but basically it can tell you in general where you're spending your time throughout the whole week. So if you're spending, you know, an average of three days on three hours a day on Facebook, it'll actually tell you, hey, you're spending too much time on Facebook. It won't tell you that, but you can see the breakdowns of where you're spending your time, whether it's Google Docs like we're in now, Skype like we're in now, and they'll categorize them as productivity tools, design tools, uh, social media things, or audiovisual, things like that too. So it's not really a productivity tool, but it's useful to see where your time's going uh, as the weeks go by too, because if you don't measure it, it's kind of just in your memory. That's right? interesting. So do you use this a lot? Uh, basically, they send you a report every week. And that's all I use it for. So I just make sure like how much, like if I'm on too much social media, I'll use my antisocial more. Because antisocial, you can set the timer up to, I think, 12 hours. You can like hard block everything for like 12 hours. So I think that's more than enough. And you can also schedule block times. So if you want to like every day from 9 to like 2, you want to block Facebook, it could actually auto block it for you too. So it's pretty cool. And rescue time's free or is it paid? Uh, rescue time's free, yeah. But if you want paid, it'll break it down some more. But free one just tells you, oh, you're in Photoshop. Yeah, help you optimize your time. All right, cool. And the next one for you, uh, Dropbox this is a pretty common one, I guess. Dropbox, if you don't know where, what it is, it's basically a folder on your computer that you can share with other people. And I use this also in combination with Google Docs for my VA. And what we do is I'll upload a file and I'll say, hey, can you fix this file? You know, put it on my Google Docs and then she'll get the file, make some changes. And then those changes are automatically updated on my computer side. So there's no need to, you know, have to send in emails or have some kind of other system. It's totally free. I believe you get up to, I don't know, two to four gigs free. But here's a little trick. If you go on Fiverr, you can pay five bucks and get... I think up to 16 or 20 gigs free. So you can hold up to 20 gigs of files. And I know Terry, you had some problems with yours, but I paid five bucks for mine and I've had 16 or 20 gigs. I forget exactly how much since then. I tried that night, my account got caught and they downgraded me back to two. And then this was last year, but I ended up paying for a year. I think it's like 10 bucks a month. And then Google Drive came out to be like five times cheaper. They, do, they, they were doing like a hundred bucks for like, 20 bucks or something like that and I was like oh, I'll just change to Google Drive so my Dropbox is like 3 gigs now but then I store most of my stuff on Google Drive and Google Drive has it's kind of like the same function really like they have the icon on the thing it's just there's no sharing as intuitive as Dropbox and there's no like shared folder that's as easy to do and I think most people still use Dropbox but for stuff that you don't need often like I just put it on Google Drive oh, okay yeah I tried using Google Drive and I found Dropbox just to be a lot more intuitive a lot easier yeah the, the ui the ux is a little bit better than drop uh, google drive too so cool and dropbox has some pretty cool things you can do with if this and that too i think even with sapier like say uh, you have like a shipping label and ship station you could probably shoot a copy over to dropbox too they got them interesting triggers like that you can make yeah i'm gonna have to look into this now hmm. all right cool so the next one um kind of both of us have is a uh, google calendar and you can book me so what's this one first because i haven't heard of this one. okay before. so i'm assuming most people know what google Cal google calendar is but in google calendar you can use this app extension kind of thing it's a website i think it's you can book or you can book dot me or you can book me just google you can book me and what it is is you share this link with people your you can book me link and they're brought to a page saying, okay, you can schedule time with Travis. This is when he's free. And they can click on it and say, okay, I want this 30 minute block from one to one thirty on Wednesday. And what it's really good for is scheduling appointments with other people. So you don't have to send someone an email saying, Hey, I'm free anytime Monday from three to five and anytime Tuesday from two to four, you know, you, you don't have to worry about that because this will take care of everything. So all you have to do is update your Google calendar with what you're going to do. And then people can automatically pick a time that works for you. So it's just simple. It's easy. Yeah. So I've been using Google calendar a lot for the mastermind calls. Uh, Cause a, they can generate a hangout invite from there. 
and also B, they can let you send a reminder to everyone too pretty easily. It's just like one button, and it's like, hey, guys, the calls this week, uh, things like that. And also, it ties into your desktop calendar if you have them linked up. So it's pretty cool how it just enters the in there and then it updates your calendar. Because I think when you do the Mac calendar, the iCal, like the time zone is really weird. And Google Calendar has a better time figuring out the different time zones too. So that's what I found it useful for. Yeah. All right, cool. So the next one, uh, audiobook for Android, this one's yours. Yeah. So what this is, is basically there's an app on Android and I'm not sure exactly what the name of is name of it is offhand, but if you type in audiobook in the Android app store, it'll come up. And it's really cool because you can put in audiobook files or podcast files. And as you're listening to it, let's say you're listening to it before bed or while you're traveling or something, you can pause it, come back to it later, and it'll leave off exactly where you paused it. And for a long time, I was just using my MP3 player or just using like the music function on my Android phone. And it wouldn't save the spot for me. So especially if you're listening to like a Joe Rogan style podcast, that's three hours and there's no way you're going to listen to it all the way through. It's great to be able to pause it, come back exactly where you left off. Gotcha. Yeah. I think the iTunes one does it itself. And MP3s can do that only if they're tagged as podcast. So this is one thing I figured out doing this podcast is like if you tag a song as a regular song, it won't remember where you stop. If you do it as a podcast and you actually open it in the podcast app, it'll actually remember. So it's kind of funny. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's, it's based off the ID3 tag uh, you have on these audio files. So in an iPhone 2, if you tag it as a podcast, it'll save the location? Well, any MP3, you change the ID3 tag to enable the podcast tag. And then in any podcast app, you should be able to just rewind. It will remember where you stopped to. So that's what I do with some audiobooks. Like if I can't find it, I'll go to YouTube. I'll download the video, I'll rip it to audio, I'll change it to a podcast, and I have it as like an audiobook. Interesting. The other cool thing about the audiobook app, and I'm sure there's a similar one on iPhone, is I actually have a separate folder just for my audiobooks. That way, I'm not, I don't have to scroll through my music, and when I'm listening to music, uh, audiobooks don't come up. Yeah, all right, cool. So the next one for me is Asana. So Asana is a project management tool. So I don't really use this, but I signed up for it recently. And a lot of DCers here, my friends, I know probably like six or seven people that are using this for their teams. And so this is the tool that I think Uber, uh, Airbnb, Pinterest use internally. So basically it's a dashboard where you can have certain projects and you can assign people to different things. You have a record of what they do. They can update their workflow, where they are with this project, things like that. So for store owners, if you have a team of, say, like three to four people and say you're doing a redesign, like you can put different tasks in the redesign and have the communications all happening in there, too. Instead of an email chain that goes back and forth, uh, different versions of a Photoshop file you're sending everyone and things like that, too. So more of like for the established store owner, uh, I know a couple of listeners are using it, too, that I was talking to on the mastermind call. So, so certainly you should sign up for this, too, because it's free for the first 15 team members. And after that, you start paying. But I mean, unless you have like more than 20 people, it's the perfect tool for you. So if you just have like, for instance, for me, I just have one virtual assistant. I assume Asana is kind of overkill. Yeah, it's kind of overkill. So if you have the second virtual assistant and they're doing overlapping work, uh, that's where you might want to look into Asana because then you can track who's doing what. Uh, there's no not, not as much back and forth because I guess Google Docs is kind of a very one-on-one -on -one thing right and when you bring another person and it can get a little wonky and especially if it's like design work like you know things like that that are more complicated that have different tasks to complete it's not just like hey do this do that it's more like hey it has some creative stuff i think asana is a good thing and free up to 15 people all right so as soon as i get that second one i'm gonna start thinking about this all right cool so next one uh, we have screen recorder uh you have camtasia I have ScreenFlow, so why don't you go first? Yeah, and there's actually another app just called Screen Recorder, and this is the third tool I use for my virtual assistant, and I combine it with the Dropbox and the Google Docs to basically what I do is I record my screen, say, hey, I need you to do this. I show her, I do it once for her, and say, all right, now either every Monday I need you to do the same thing or I need you to do this 100 times on all these photos, whatever. But it's really easy way to explain to somebody what you want done because there's no question you don't have to write it out it's like look at literally this and it's super simple and you can also use it to make youtube videos for instance i actually use it to make a couple random youtube videos to show people like hey uh this is how you can do you know paid ads or whatever 
And the cool thing, I have it so it automatically goes into my Dropbox folder. So as soon as I'm done, I save it in the Dropbox folder. And another one I use is Camtasia. And that's if you want to have your webcam on the same thing. And that's what I use if I'm going to be uploading it to YouTube because it's kind of cool to have like a little person in the top like talking to you. It makes it a little bit more human friendly. Yeah, it's not like reading off a of PowerPoint. You actually have an icon of your face in the corner. These are like those classic internet marketing videos they do. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so the Camtasia is the PC version. Uh, the Mac version is ScreenThrow. I think it's a little bit more expensive. ScreenThrow, I think it's like $100, but uh, definitely a very good tool if you're doing video or anything like that. And they have a really intuitive editor too. At least in ScreenFlow, once you're done with something, you can just cut it up, export it, and send it to YouTube too. So uh, you use it for VA. I think if you're doing like presentations, anything like instructional, it's a good tool also. Uh, but basically anything multimedia, like it's better than to just record off, I think, Photo Booth and the iMac because the tools aren't as good and you know the UX, UI isn't. And I think there's another free version, I think Cam Studio or something like that, that you can go online and find. But the, I didn't find it to work on my computer, so that's why I ended up going with Screen Recorder. Yeah, and I think the thing you talked about where do you do a video of what you want your VA to do, because I think you can always explain it in a document, talk to them on Skype. It's probably easier to just show them in like a two-minute video. It takes five minutes because, you know, the thing is, if I write it out, I find that I'm very critical. On, I want to make sure it makes sense. And it takes time to think about it, where if I do a screen thing in five minutes, I'm done. I don't have to think about it. And I, I literally like I don't mind making mistakes as I go on a screen flow, screen recording type thing because I can correct them really easy. But in a Word document, you need to make sure you have the final thing done before you send it to her because you don't want to confuse them. You could even take it to another step like, hey, here's how I did it. Can you record your screen once just to see, make sure I got this right? Right. That's even quicker. Even a double insurance thing against this in case they look at it. And because sometimes I think these video things, if the resolution is too high, you can't see what exactly they're doing, and you have to like zoom in to see it, or you might miss a little click here and there. So you never know if it's like you know related to like Photoshop work, design things uh, that are more detail oriented too. All right, cool. So the last one I have: pen and notebook. It's old school pen and paper. So I was listening to a podcast uh, by this artist. Wait, where do you download this? What, pen and notebook? Yeah. You go to the store and you buy it. What? In real life? Yeah, real life. you never done that before? Oh my gosh. Did you even know how to use a pen? I, I'm <laughs> learning. I'm slowly learning. Yeah. So he was, so this artist was saying, uh, whether you're entrepreneur, designer, product creator, like everything can boil down to a pen and paper. Like you can write your thoughts, you can sketch things, you can concept things out you know mind map things basically i think pen and notebook if you have it i use it to keep track of my day-to-day -day tasks i actually don't use something like trello or whatever these apps are that have to-do lists uh, just because i like having it in front of me and i like that feeling when i do something and i cross it out rather than it being in the digital nethers on the internet too and i think notebook's fine because uh you can kind of write things here and there add notes different things like that and it just feels something, maybe because I'm old school, we grew up, you know, with pen and paper before, rather than kids right now with, you know, laptops and things like that. So there's something about writing it on a piece of paper and then like doing it and crossing it out that I find satisfying. So. I completely agree. Actually, every morning, I tend to do this when I'm, when I feel more anxious, I'm always writing down what I want to do. And then it just feels good to write it down. You don't have to think about it. Once you write it down, it's there on paper and you can go back later and cross it out. And I do this every morning. I write a list of, all right, what are the five to six things that I'd like to get done today? And then throughout the day, I just slowly cross them off and it feels so good. And the second thing is I'll have it next to my computer a lot of times because it's like an, it's like an extra screen almost that if I have like a random thought that I don't want to break my workflow, I can just pick up that pen, write down that random thought, go back to it later, as opposed to opening up a document, waiting for that document to open up, then typing it in there, then saving it. That breaks the workflow too much. So just have it next to your computer. It makes it so much easier. Yeah, I go to breakfast with a pen and notebook and I don't bring my phone with me and I just write out what's on my mind or what I need to do. And I think it's, it's a lot clearer when you have distractions like the computer, your phone, things like that to get this out of your head. And one thing I heard Tim Ferriss talk about on his podcast like a couple of weeks ago was that when you do this exercise, like say you write what's making you nervous, like 10 things, you just dump it out. And then the next stage is to figure out uh, what 
out of that list makes other things irrelevant or easier to do, like a force multiplier, right? And then you can really narrow down like two, three things you really need to do on a piece of paper, and then you just focus on that. And you, so then you turn on antisocial, block everything, you know, Google Docs, whatever you need, and then you just focus on that after you've written it down on a piece of paper because it's always in front of you. Yeah, and I used to actually, that when I found this podcast, I used to just go for a walk every day, bring a little tiny notebook, like a pocket-sized notebook with me and take notes. And I believe there's something very, I don't know, primal is the right word, but about writing down something, it helps you actually remember it better. So I'd, I'd write down the notes from your episodes actually, and I wouldn't have to necessarily go back to my notebook because I just remembered them. Whereas if I just listened to them, the podcast episodes and had these ideas and didn't write them down, I would have forgot them. It's just how it works. Yeah, I think there's one thing, if you look at like when you type notes into like a text file or Evernote, you can do it without thinking about it, right? You can listen to a music while you're doing that, while you're typing mindlessly. But when you write something down, you actually have to like think about what you're writing. Because I guess writing is slower and your brain thinks faster, so your thoughts are more engaged by doing that action. I mean, there's probably some science behind this, but you know, we're not pros, we're just two guys on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are the 12 things uh, that we use for productivity uh, programs and apps. I'll go over this list again. Uh, Google Docs slash Google Drive, Antisocial, uh, Newsfeed Blocker. I believe this is only for Chrome. I'm not, I'm not sure if Firefox or Safari has it too. Uh, if This Then That, Zapier, uh, LastPass, Rescue Time, Dropbox slash Google Drive again, uh, Google Calendar plus a plugin, You Can Book Me, uh, audiobook for Android, uh, Asana for project management, Screen Recorder, Camtasia, ScreenFlow, and also the good old pen and notebook. Nice. That's a great exhaustive list. Yeah, I know. Speaking of exhaustive list, uh, I think it's time we get out of here and uh, enjoy our day. So, Travis, always good to catch up with you again, and we'll see you next week. Yep. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Build My Online Store podcast. If you want the show notes, make sure to check out the website at buildmyonlinestore.com. And if you've got an e-commerce store, every two weeks I lead a live mastermind call with about five or six of the listeners in two separate groups where we work openly together and solve a business problem that you have. And we're all there to support each other. So if this sounds like a cup of tea, make sure to check us out at buildmyonlinestore.com slash mastermind. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch up with you guys next week. <laughs>